so uh, we will get started now so this as I said is a overview webinar on selenium test automation process in this webinar we will have three sections the first section is where we give you an introduction to the selenium automation process followed by a demo of how a test script is created using selenium and the third part I will open the session for question S. So uh, there are a lot of participants so I would expect the participants to come up with your question S on the last part I mean last 10 minutes of the session we will have the um, um, the question and answer sessions and uh, so I would expect uh, people uh, uh, not to uh, post questions before that because if there are I mean there are so many people on the session so it would be practically impossible for me to answer everyone's questions so I'll give you a specific time for that and then you can go ahead during that time alone okay so selenium is a robust uh, set of tools that would support uh, rapid uh, automation of web-based applications so selenium is an open source test automation tool for automating web applications it can automate only web applications you cannot automate Windows applications and uh, other uh, applications using Selenium. So it's a, it's a purely web-based open source test automation tool. You can automate any application that works on a web browser. And it will help you to uh, create test scripts faster. And uh, you can actually run the test scripts on any browser. So one of the major advantage of uh, Selenium is that it supports cross-browser testing, which means I can create a test script on one browser and I can run the test script on multiple browsers. So doing a cross-browser testing is very, very simple using Selenium. So... Uh, other thing is Selenium will allow you to automate or to create test automation scripts on various languages like it can allow you to create test scripts in Java, C Sharp, Ruby and Python. So uh, Selenium allows the user the choice of picking the language that he wants. Right? So and coming to the overview of Selenium automation process, Selenium actually has three components. Selenium has three major components. Uh, one is called as the uh, Selenium ID. There is something called as Selenium ID. Uh, then there is something called as Selenium remote control or web driver. Then uh, there are some integration tools called Ant and Maven. So on the overall, if you look at the Selenium automation process, first what you would do is you would create the test scripts using Selenium IDE. Then whatever script is created, that script can be enhanced. I mean that script can be enhanced by using TestNG remote control or JUnit web driver. You can use any of these technologies for enhancing your script. Once you have made the scripts, then all the scripts can be integrated into a framework using Ant or Maven. This is the overall test automation process using Selenium IDE. So you have to create your test scripts using Selenium IDE. Then you will uh, enhance that script or you will add the spice to the script by using TestNG remote control or JUnit web driver. Then you will integrate these scripts into a framework by using Ant Maven. Okay, there is something called Ant, Apache Ant and there is something called Maven. So you use any one of these technologies to integrate your scripts. Now, first let us see what Selenium IDE is. So basically Selenium IDE is 
um, a, a, a Firefox extension used for creating test scripts. So using Selenium IDE you can actually record your test scripts and uh, replay them on Firefox browser. So remember this word that Selenium IDE is used for creating test scripts but these test scripts will run only on Firefox. Suppose if you want to run the scripts on various browsers or various operating system then you will have to use uh, TestNG remote control or <coughs> WebDriver JUnit. So the purpose of Selenium IDE is to simply create test scripts is to simply create test scripts that could run on say, on Firefox browser only. If you want the test scripts to run on different browsers then you will have to use TestNG remote control or WebDriver JUnit. Now let me show you a demo on how to use the Selenium IDE. So here, so usually as I already discussed that Selenium IDE, I mean I have already discussed, I mean I have already told you that uh, Selenium IDE will work only on Firefox browser. So if you want to use the Selenium IDE, then you will have to install uh, a Firefox browser. So here we are installing a Firefox browser in order to run or in order to use the Selenium IDE. So Selenium IDE can help you only to create pure test scripts. You cannot write any validations or you cannot write any logic inside that. Only your test steps can be automated using the Selenium IDE. So here we are going to see how to install the Selenium IDE. I am just installing a fresh copy of um, uh, Firefox and then I would install the Selenium IDE in that. So I am opening Firefox now. I mean this is Eclipse. I will come to the Eclipse later. First now I am installing, uh, I am mean, just opening the Firefox browser. Uh, as already discussed, uh, Selenium IDE is a Firefox extension. So you will have to install the Selenium IDE as an extension in Firefox. So what you do is www.seleniumhq.org you go to the site called seleniumhq.org. All these operations have to be done by using Firefox browser only. Go to the download section. Go to the download section. Here you have the Selenium IDE. This is the first component. So Selenium IDE, I am going to download that. It's going to be a, an extension using the Selenium Firefox. So it will it will quickly download a small patch onto your system. I'm saying install now. So Selenium IDE is installed on your machine now. It will ask you to restart the Selenium browser. Sorry, the Firefox browser. So once the site is opened, you can see Selenium IDE here. If you see Selenium IDE here, it means that the browser, the IDE has been installed on your machine. So you would see Selenium IDE here. In this part of the page, you would see Selenium IDE. So here it's an indication that the Selenium IDE has been installed on all the, on your machine. Now let us create a test script HTTP examples dot code charge dot com slash store slash default dot PHP. 
So this is an online shopping site. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to create a test script on this, okay, using the Selenium IDE. Observe this carefully. I go to Tools, select Selenium IDE. The IDE window will open in this way. Now here, there is a record button. This is the record button. Now it says that the script is now in the recording mode, right? So what we would do is, we will start recording. I'm selecting programming. I say Perl. And I click on search. Then I select a link. Add that to the shopping cart. Then I click here to purchase. Come back to the home page. So I have created a test script. So this is called as, this is the test script that has been created. The format of the script, this is not any language. This is called as Selenese command. This is called as Selenese command. So using Selenese command, I mean when you record, uh, the Selenium IDE will create, will record all your test steps as Selenese commands. Now, whenever I want to do the same testing again, all I will do is click on this play button. Play test case. Right now, after I click it, all the activities that you are seeing on the screen are not done by me. It is done by the tool. So I click here. Now you can see it has clicked on programming Perl, then it is clicking on programming Perl, then it is adding that book to the shopping cart, then it is going to the home page. So, so basically it has, it has created a test script. So I created a test script and I am able to replay that test script. But the execution or the replaying or the recording will happen only on Firefox browser. I cannot run this test script on any other browser. If I want to run the test script on any other browser, then I will need either remote control test ng or web driver JUnit. Any one of this is required. Unless otherwise I have that, I will not be able to create the test script. Okay. So, what I did was, I installed Selenium IDE, recorded a sample script, and then I replayed it. So, when I replayed it, it was able to replay. Similarly, when replaying the code, okay, we can also add something called as assertions. While replaying the code, we can add something called as assertions. I'll show you what is an assertion. So, Selenese allows multiple ways for checking UI elements. Verifications or assertions, any one of this, is used to check if an element is present on the page. Specific text is somewhere on the page. A specific text is located at a specific uh, location on the page. Verifications and assertions are not one and the same. They are different. There are two things. Either you can add an assertion or you can add a verification. If an assertion fails, the script will be aborted. But if you add a verification, the script will continue. Even if a verification point fails, the script will continue. But if an assertion fails, the script will abort. Now, let me show you how to create a script with assertions. So here, what I do is, I create a test script. Now, see here, I say programming, I say Perl, I search. Then, I click on this book. Once I click on this book, I want to check if this text is displayed there. I want to check if this text is displayed there. So what I do is, I select the text, right click, you will see something called as show all available commands. Right? On, this will come only when you are using Selenium IDE for recording. So I will select the code, right click, show all available commands and then you will say, 
assert text present assert text present so here we are checking the uh, assert text present so it is going to check whether the text is present there or not now I am going to add this to the shopping cart and in this what I am going to do is I am going to verify I am going to verify whether this edit box is present previously I checked if the text was present in this case I am checking if that edit box is present so here I will say right click show all available commands and say assert element present so if you want to check if a particular text is present you will say assert text present but if you want to verify if a particular element or a particular object is present in the page you will use assert element present now the script is generated you could see two commands assert text present which will verify if the text is present there or not assert element present which will check if that edit box is present there or not so I'll run the code now here you could see that the assertions have passed right, you can just go there and see that in the log see assertion assert text present right so it passed here right that is why you can see that they are these the assertions is coming in uh, green color dark green color which shows that the assertion is failed so let's say a small example now instead of putting programming pearl I'll say programming pearls so maybe my expected result is something wrong so in this case when I run it you could see yeah, someone is asking will it work on Firefox for Mac yes it will you could now see that it has failed now you can see that the assertion has failed because I wrote programming pearls if you write programming pearl I mean if the text was present it would pass the text is not present then it will fail so this is how you are, you are going to create a test script in Selenium IDE and this is how you are going to run the test script in Selenium uh, IDE. Now, now that we have seen how to create a test script in IDE, let us see what is the um, limitations of IDE.